Welcome back to another differential reinforcement video. In this installment, you'll be able to assess your knowledge base regarding those procedures. Hi, I'm Tom McIntyre, Dr. Mac of BehaviorAdvisor.com. I'll be your inquisitor today, so put on your thinking caps. Here we go. You'll remember that our differential reinforcement procedures are planned, prepared, and precise. To ensure that's the case, we identify the target behavior, the one we want changed. We define it specifically in observable and measurable terms. We then select the appropriate DR strategy. If it happens to be DRI or DRA, the incompatible and alternative versions, we select a positive behavior to replace the one of concern. Of course, we define that positive behavior in observable and measurable terms. We then identify reinforcers that we know will motivate this youngster to put forth his or her best effort. We determine our criteria for success. At what point is this behavior now acceptable and we have been, we have been successful with this youngster? We go ahead and start our intervention. We continue to collect data. We've already got our baseline data that gave us our starting point. Now we continue to collect data to determine whether we have met some level of success or perhaps to calculate new reinforcement intervals. First question. The student's behavior was targeted for reduction. We want to get less of this. And the student will receive a reinforcer, a point for pleasantly complying within 10 seconds of a direction versus the behavior we dislike, the complaining, the hesitating, and the refusing when that direction is given. Hmm. We are substituting a behavior in place of the one we dislike. And in fact, you can't complain, hesitate, and refuse if you're complying presently, uh, pleasantly. Ah, yes, D-R-I. We've got a youngster who has difficulty attending to task. But for each four-minute period that he or she is on task, this youngster is going to get some reinforcement. Hmm. We've got our reinforcement interval, four minutes, that we figured out from our baseline data. And you know, a youngster can't be off task if he or she is on task. Yes, we are reinforcing an incompatible behavior. We have a youngster here who is tardy, an average of 18 of her 30 weekly classes, always on time for art, PE, etc. So we know that from our deeper investigation and also likes those science and math classes. We come up with a criteria that if she attends 20 out of her 30 classes, two-thirds of them, she'll receive a video of her favorite science program, the Magic School Bus. She'll get to take it home for a weekend. Which of the DR procedures have we implemented here? Let's see, it's, I guess you can't be absent if you're attending, but we're not requiring that all of the time. We're actually lowering the number of tardies, but we've stated it in a positive way. Gee, I've, I would hang my hat on a positive version of DRL known as DRH. Differential reinforcement of higher levels of the behavior. We are saying, you know what, we like on time for class. We like attendance. We want more of that. Yes, we are reducing the number of tardies, but we're really focusing on increasing the number of on time arrivals and attendance. Yeah, I know it, it, it's, uh, it, it's all in the semantics here, the meanings of the words and the phraseology. 
I could see three of these, DRI, DRL, and DRH being on the map, but the phraseology leads us to DRH. For each day that no physical contact occurs between pupils, we've got a group version here. We've got the whole class involved. They're working on anger management as a class. And if we get no negative physical contact between our, our, our young learners, they're going to get granola bar bites and cocoa for the first period of the next day. Hmm. No exhibits of the behavior. Zero rates being displayed. Yes, we're looking at DRO. Hmm. The youngster is still going to get a demerit, a penalty for calling out an answer. Okay, we're going to continue on with that. But we are going to reinforce the youngster for each time he or she raises his or her hand with the lips closed. Hmm. Kid calls out answers. That's our target behavior. That's a bothersome one. We want to replace it with raising of the hand with lips closed. You're right. We can't call out the answer if our lips are closed. We have an incompatible behavior that we are promoting. D-R-I. The youngster says, give me the... And we're working on a bit more polite phrasing of that. The youngster can still say, give me the, but we're saying, please put in, please. Hmm. So it's not an incompatible behavior. The youngster still gets to say, give me, but it's a more socially acceptable version of it. DRA, a differential reinforcement of an alternative, more socially palatable action. Oh, on the first day of school, Plato's really missing his mom, and he cries out, I want my mommy, 75 times in 15 minutes. You're going to figure out the IRT, that interval that Plato must withhold that behavior in order to get reinforcement. You had the formula before, do you remember it? I'm going to give it to you in just a second. So why don't you pause at this point? Go find the formula, maybe do the calculations. Come back and see if we match up. There we go. We see those 15 minutes on the top divided by the 75 times it happened. We reduce that fraction. We get down to one-fifth. One-fifth of what? Oh. One-fifth of a minute, those time intervals that we're using. We had 15 of them. All right. So one-fifth of a minute is 12 seconds. That means every 12 seconds that Plato goes without... <laughs> I guess my reinforcement interval is up here with that ringing. <laughs> we are, every time he goes 12 seconds, he's going to get reinforced. Yeah, wow, we're going to have to have some one-on-one -on -one attention here, but we're hoping over time that that interval is going to expand and expand greatly quickly. In our final activity, your task, alone or with a group, is to look at each of these behaviors on our list and define each one in, yes, you guessed it, observable and measurable terms. Then for each one, determine which of the DR procedures would be appropriate. For a number of these actions, more than one could be applicable, would be effective in helping to modify that behavior. Pause the podcast at this particular time. Otherwise, you'll be hearing my sign-off. Thank you for joining me for another video regarding the behaviorist model and the ABA school. How they understand and change behavior. I hope you'll join me again for another video on BehaviorAdvisor.com.